rain, rain, go away. Well, maybe some of us are loving the rain we are getting, while others are not. Right now, it's supposed to be, it's a beautiful day, but tomorrow we are supposed to get some thunderstorms. And I'm not the weatherman, I know, but this has to do with the topic, with today's, with this week's topic. And I want to talk about how rain can help your landscape and talk about something called rainscapes. Have you heard of that term? Another new one for me too. So let's dive into rainscapes and what they are in this episode. Hi, it's Kasha McDaniel and I am a home stager decorator and you're listening to the Creative Home Podcast where I talk about staging and decorating and all things associated with your home. So take a listen. Pardon the interruption. Do you know that I now have an Etsy shop? Yes, it's called the Willow Brook Printable. And there you'll find digital art prints that you can purchase, download, and print to hang in your home. Take advantage of all the places I got to visit when we lived in Europe. I have pictures of the Tower Bridge in London, the beautiful architecture in Amsterdam, Charles Bridge in Prague, and many more to come. Willowbrook Printable is where you can find these wall art prints so you can decorate your living room, dining room, bedroom, or other spaces. Now you don't have an excuse for those empty walls in your house. Download pictures of sunflowers or landmarks in Europe. Come check out Willowbrook Printable at etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Willowbrook Printable. Thank you so much for listening to the Creative Home Podcast. I am your host, Kasha McDaniel, and I really do thank you, those of you who are listening, um, because it means you're trying to learn something new, and me too, and this is something that I am learning about also, and it's called rainscapes, and I heard this, found this term on Pinterest. Um, I love Pinterest. I just love finding different things out there, um, and another mashup of words. Last week, we talked about hip historic homes. Now, we're talking about rainscapes, and I'm just like, Wait, what? I know landscaping, but this is this is something new. Um, <clears throat> so when spring shows up here, it means we get some spring rains. And it's no different here in North Carolina. Although lately, our rain comes with thunderstorms because the weather wants to be near 90 in April. I know, 90 degrees. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's April still. It's not even July. What's going on? <clears throat> so I am thankful for those showers to help cool it down. Now, some of you are looking at your landscape like me and wondering what you can do to help it. So, and I normally rely on Mother Nature to help me with that because I forget to water things. Really, I really do, even inside. Um, Luckily, I've bought some plants that let me forget for a little while, a week or two, that they're forgiving. I don't need to water them every other day. And I'm still struggling with... um, watering my seeds. They're they're just not working. If you listen to an episode I talked about um, a while back, I'm gonna have to look it up and see now and add it to my notes. Um, But we were trying to plant some seeds and it's just, yeah, of the five, I got two to live um, so far, but they're still not looking so good. Anyway, so yeah, so you can see my, my um, problem with watering things. And so that's why I rely on mother nature, but sometimes mother nature doesn't show up on time. Like I need them to be okay. Um, so there's other things that you can do to help. If you're like me, that needs to water your plants on a regular basis and not rely on mother nature all the time. Right? So I looked up ways to naturally water my plants versus just turning on the sprinkler and found some interesting topics about it. So first off, there's something called rainwater harvesting. Now it's a system that collects, <clears throat> diverts, and stores rain in a catchment tank, often a barrel or a buried cistern. Okay. Now rainwater can then be successfully used for landscape irrigation because rainwater is collected directly from the sky where it's funneled off of your roofs. Now there's a lot that goes into designing something like this, and I will leave the link in the notes. But overall, here's some things you need to think about. Number one, what is the captured water going to be used for? The plants? Is it grass? You know, how much, how much do you have, right? Number two, how much can be captured? Number three, what collection surface will you use? In my case, it's going to be the downspouts. I don't know what any other collection surface is, but there are other things out there if you Google it, right? Number four, calculating the volume of rainfall. Oh my God, my eyes are getting watery here. Number five, estimating your indoor water demand. And number six, estimating your outdoor water demand. 
Okay, just saying those last few things <laughs> hurts my hurts my head. Oh my gosh, I just want something to use for my plants, right? I don't want it complicated. So that's one big system that you can use. The rainwater harvesting, which is great if that's something that you have the talent for, the the um, time for to do. Um, <clears throat> it's, yeah, there are just some advantages to the whole system, but there are some disadvantages like regular maintenance on the system, technical skills to install it yourself if you can't find someone to do it for you. And if it's not installed correctly, it may attract mosquitoes and other waterborne diseases, which is one of my concerns because here in Carolina, yeah, we got mosquitoes, we've got chiggers, we've got all sorts of bugs, you know, so I don't want the rain barrels, rain system to be, you know, a place for them to, you know, have more mosquitoes, right? <clears throat> So maybe you want to go the other route and think about drought tolerant landscaping. That's an option too. If you don't, you know, you're looking outside going, yeah, these things are just dying. They're just not working, right? Some of you may live in areas like New Mexico or Arizona where you can't use too much water. That is another route you can link into for your landscaping. Now, if you visit a local nursery in your area, because they, if you visit them, they will have plants that live best in your area and are tolerant of the rainfall and the temperature ranges. So they're the best places to go um, to figure out which ones work best. Always ask them. They are just always willing to share information with you. Talk to the nursery, talk to the people there who work there, the gardener, they will know, okay? <clears throat> but say you really want to collect some rainwater and you think, well, What's the easiest way to do that? Because you don't want to do the, you know, the drought tolerant stuff. Maybe you do want a little bit, but you still want to have something really nice in your yard. Okay. And there's something that simple can be as simple as a rain barrel at the end of your downspout. Now, this is something that I'm kind of interested in. And I did some research and I found some rain barrel kits on Amazon because I was just curious and they have 50 gallon containers where you can collect multiple where you can connect, sorry, connect multiple rain barrels together, which I found interesting because I never thought of connecting them before. I just thought you just have one at the end of each downspout, right? Like one in each corner of the house, right? No, you can actually connect them together so you can fill one and, and keep on going. I was like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. They also have a debris screen to keep the water clean and a water hose that you can connect to it and use it to water your plants or your grass. Now, there are many to choose from depending on size and color. And normally they start off with kind of the brown color. Um, but basically, you just place the rain barrel at the end of your gutter downspouts. And like I said, you could probably place at least one on each corner of your house unless you, pro you probably have more places that the um, maybe gutters come down in multiple places around your house. Maybe your house is just a, a different shape that it does that, but at least four. Um, and so that may be something that you know, I'd be interested in, right? So while I'm interested in the solution because it rains a lot in North Carolina now, come summertime, we get that darn humidity and heat where we don't see rain for weeks. I mean, it is just dusty. Uh, but we also personally, we live on a well. And so while we have enough for the house, we don't have enough water to turn on sprinklers for the yard grass the same day. You know, we can maybe limit it to like 30 minutes a day or something like that. But really not a lot. So this is in the time when we were told <clears throat> that if we get enough water for the house, we'd have to dig a separate well just for the irrigation. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's thousands of dollars. And a rain barrel, not as expensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that is a possible solution that I'm kind of looking and in, in interested in. If you guys have something like that already set up, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know. Um, <clears throat> but I also found that the rain barrels don't have to be ugly looking either. I've seen that some look like large vases. They're pretty or an actual barrel, but you have, there's a place to put a plant on top too. So I was like, oh, so it looks kind of pretty, kind of hides it, you know? So I'll be doing some of my own research and see which ones we go with. Um, like I said, prices range um, from 120 bucks to $200, depending on the style you go with. So a lot less than the thousands of dollars we would need to do to dig another well just for irrigation. So this is something you may want to think about, you know, maybe your water bills are crazy too. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, but I really like the flowers in the front, you know, I have to keep them watered. 
a rain barrel may be the easiest and simplest solution for you. Um, so yeah, so take a look. I hope this gives you something to think about when you water your plants next time, because I am the kind that wait for mother nature, but I know there are times I can't rely on her and I have to water my plants anyway. So I hope you guys can think about how this can help you thinking about rainwater harvesting. Maybe if you're not into that, you want to go totally opposite way of just drought tolerant landscape. Maybe it's the kinds of plants that are more drought tolerant or rock. You know, some people use just rock landscaping and, and that's all they do. And that's fine. Maybe that's what they do. Um, but a rain barrel to me seems to be the simplest kind of middle ground, easiest solution, not as expensive as like for us digging another well for just for irrigation. So I hope this gives you guys something to think about and I will talk to you next week.